As we seek to worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we welcome you, we welcome you. Come on, put your hands together, everybody. Put your hands together, everybody, as we welcome those who are joining us on social media, as we welcome those who are joining us from different parts of the Caribbean, from different parts of the world. We magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. A song that simply says, my hallelujah belongs to you for you deserve it hallelujah my hallelujah belongs to you you deserve it hallelujah is there anyone who has come with a praise on their lips with the for the lord this morning hallelujah hallelujah come on brownstone stand to your feet if you can as long as you can stand to your feet just stand where you are hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. The song simply says, My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. That's it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. To you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You your hands together to magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time we have Pastor Delroy Williams coming to us to take us further. God bless you. Come on, go ahead and praise the Lord, somebody. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Come on, you just sang it. Come on, my hallelujah belongs to you come on if you deserve it just clap your hands all ye people shout unto God with voices of triumph I mean only only those persons who recognize that you got through this week last week because of God 
You got through some situations all because of God. Just shout hallelujah in the place. Just shout hallelujah. The enemy would have. But God stepped in. You deserve it, Jesus. Masa. You deserve it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody in here can testify that God deserved? Come on, get personal. Get personal. Nothing wrong with that. Get personal about it. You missed that accident because God stepped in. Olomasa. Your head hurt. But you missed going to the hospital because God stepped in. Hallelujah. You'd have been flat out broke. But somehow God stepped in. And you were able to pay some bills. Come on, somebody shout in the atmosphere. God, you deserve it. No, you got to say it like you mean it now. You gotta tell him like you you you, want, you really want to tell him you deserve it, Nilo Mama Masa. You deserve it, Jesus. You deserve it. I went to bed last night and I got up back. Yes. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Spend about a minute and just tell God thank you. Just spend about a minute. Just echo the work worship. Hallelujah. Echo some worship in the house. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. You, you, didn't go on, you, you don't go on 40 seconds more. 40 seconds more. Just do that. You're still worshiping. You deserve it, Jesus. You deserve it, Jesus. About 30 seconds to go. Your, your mouth is still closed. Come on, open your mouth. You're going to break through because you're going to worship. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 20 more seconds. Hallelujah. You can, you, you can join those phrases with clapping right now. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Another 10 seconds. Let's count down. 10 seconds. Come on, let it be louder in this house. Let it be louder in this house. Let it be louder where you are. Wherever you are in your house. Wherever you are at work. Come on, let it be loud. Let the praises go up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be singing this song from your hymnal. The Lily of the Valley. Song number 72. The Lily of the Valley.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bow your heads where you are. Evangelist Barrett, he's going to be coming and she's going to be praying at this time. Evangelist Elaine Barrett. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Jesus. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you this morning for your loving kindness to us, Lord. We give you glory this morning. Lord, you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Hallelujah. We lift you up this morning. You are holy. Hallelujah. You are everlasting. Hallelujah. You are good. You are excellent to us this morning. We honor you for who you are this morning, God. You are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. And as we gather this morning to worship you, Glory. Father, we pray, God, this morning that you will yeah. accept our worship. We pray, oh God, that you will accept our praise this morning as we come to spice you up this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. We come to worship Hallelujah. you, God. We come to give you glory. We honor you this morning, God Almighty. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, but you did. You clothed us in our right mind. This morning, you put food on our table. Even though pain may be rocking the bodies. Hallelujah. You stepped in just in time. And this morning, we are grateful, God. We tell you thanks for keeping us through the week, God. Many obstacles, many barriers, many thorns, many snares. But God, you have kept us, God. We thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You brought us through the year. We came through from January until now. And we are in your presence this morning. We just want to tell you thanks, Lord. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for taking care of us, God. You have been our helper. You have been our protector. You have been our guide. And this morning we come to worship Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. We come to lift you up, Lord. We come to magnify your name. God, we praise you. Thank you for keeping us, God. Remember the shepherd of this house this morning, Lord. We ask that you constantly you, keep him, God, in your care. Remember his dear wife, God Almighty. Continue to keep them, God, as the apple of your eye. Remember the family, God. Remember the entire apostolic family this morning, Jesus. You know whatever struggles, God, whatever we are, we are going through, God, you know all about our struggles this morning. As we come Thank in your Jesus. presence to worship you this morning, help us to let go and let you have your way. Help us to worship you in the beauty of holiness today. Help us to forget about ourselves and just to Hallelujah. Up and just Hallelujah. to magnify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever situation, whatever circumstances, you have done it already. You walked through the fire with the Hebrew boy. Yeah, Lord, you Lord, can Lord, do Lord. it this morning. Hallelujah. You closed the lion's mouth yeah. in Daniel's time. You can do it this morning. You can do it, Jesus. You are the same God. You kept yes, the Lord. children of Israel. Hallelujah. For 40 years in one suit of clothes. This morning you can do more than enough. Hallelujah. More than we ever ask of you this morning. Father, we take ask you that you'll walk through this place, Allah God. Allah walk Allah through Allah. this place, Lord Hallelujah. God. Let your anointing be felt upon even the least among us this morning, God Almighty. Let your Holy Spirit saturate, God, from the rostrum to the pew as we lift you up in worship, God. Hallelujah. We know, God, that you're going to bless us. God, this morning as we enter with thanksgiving in our hearts, we pray, God, that you will shower down your blessings upon us this Thank morning. Thank you, Jesus. God, continue to bless us. Continue to keep us, God. We lift everything in your hands this morning, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit pray.
Jehovah's worship. Hallelujah. Pastor Gloria Joyce Johnson. If he carried into the church. Hallelujah. We celebrate if anybody wanted us worship. Hallelujah. Just clap your hands in the house. As he come down the aisle, just clap your hands in the house and give God thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. I will live for you. Mama Massa, Lord, I live for you. Lord, I live for you. Lord, I live for you. Till you come. Till you come. I will walk with you. I will walk with you. With you. Somebody worship Jesus. Oh, we Even when it's it oh Lord, I'll be your love. Storm clouds, storm clouds, storm clouds, storm clouds, Come on, somebody worship.
Hallelujah. Somebody worship. Hallelujah. We have in the house today Apostle Dr. G. W. Johnson, B. H. M. J. P. And Pastor Gloria Joyce Johnson in the house. 56 years of pastoral service. Allah Masa. I feel God when I say that. Hallelujah. I'm a testimony of this, this ministry. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. Just clap your hands in this house and worship God as we honor these two persons today. Hallelujah. We continue to worship. We're going to we're going to be pinning on the corsages while they're there, while he's standing there. We're gonna pin on the corsage. And I'm gonna be asking Missionary Kevin Christie, along with Elder Paul Walker, to do the honors of pinning on the corsages. Come on, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. 56 years. Come on, let's celebrate. All the Kodak moments. Oh, somebody. You stopped worshiping already? Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Jesus to do when you come in faith believing you just ask him to there's no mountain too high that God cannot move there's no valley too low he won't see you through you see there's nothing too high for Jesus to do when you come in faith believing you just ask him to you can call him
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worth it, Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. We're going to be doing hallelujah. just the verse one more time. As Apostle sits in his chair, there's no mountain too high that God cannot move. There's no valley too low that he won't see you through. There is nothing too hard for Jesus to do when you come in faith, believing you just ask him to. This is something that the apostle has taught us over and over and over again as a man of faith. So apostle. There's no mountain too high that God cannot move. There's no valley too low he won't see you through. You see there's nothing too hard for Jesus to do when you come in faith believing you just ask him to there's no mountain too high that God cannot move there's no valley too low he won't see you through you see there's nothing too hard for Jesus to do when you come in faith believing you just ask him to you can call on that name just call him call on that name Come on, somebody praise the Lord. You know, you may be seated. That song, that song touched a chord for me. Uh, a little nostalgic. As a little boy in boarding school, where the Radio, radio program Showers of Pentecost was my only church. Apostle was preaching on faith. A series of faith messages. And one night he spoke of the man who Peter and John walking up to the temple gate beautiful and about two days after I was in my dorm when I heard a young man one of my good friends groaning in pain and I ignored it 
And later on in the day, I got back in the dorm and he was still in pain. And something moved me. I know it was Jesus. Moved me to rem and reminded me of the message that this man preached. I walked over to him and I said, do you believe that God can heal you? And he said, yes. And I said, listen, I'm going to read something to you. I don't know what, if you believe God, it will happen. And I took the Bible to the scripture he preached from. And as I read, um, read the scripture, I heard, when I got to the point where I said, silver and gold, have I none? But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, yes. Christ of Nazareth, I heard him said, mm. And I said, get up and walk. And I laid hand on him and prayed and I left the dorm to a meeting. I remember that meeting so vividly. Amen. When I left, came back from the meeting that night, I passed him on the corridor. And somebody who was in the dorm ran to me and said, you remember that guy you prayed for? He's walking up and down all over the place. He's all right from morning him sick. And you prayed for him and he is healed in the name of Jesus. So when I heard the song and the, uh, Evangelist Fullerton raised it again, it reminding us of what Apostle taught us. Amen. If you have faith, the size of a mustard seed you can say to this mountain be removed you be, be thou removed and be cast into the midst of the sea I believe it about 10 persons who believe that God is a healer just stand up and shout a praise and sit down shout a praise in the house call on that name now call on that name Oh, you're, you're, not, you're not shouting it. Come on, you need, you need to sound like the blind Bartimaeus. Jesus! Thou son of David. Allah, my master. Have mercy. Jesus! Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Pastor Beverly O'Black is going to be coming and she's going to be reading the scripture for the day. At this time. Pastor Black. Mm -hmm. Speak the name of Jesus In victory you can claim Stand upon His promises Believing by faith, nothing is impossible when you call on that name. Stand everywhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 to 14. Praise the Lord. Am I not an apostle? Yes. Of course. Am I not free? Yes. Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Hallelujah. Are not ye my work in the Lord? Hallelujah. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. Yes. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles? And as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas? Have not we power to forbear working? 
Who goes a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Amen. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if ye shall reap your carnal things? My, 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 my. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things the less we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? That's right. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're still going to sing our song. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us and the truth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Holy people, praise Him, all ye people, for His merciful kindness is great towards us. Thank you, Jesus. And the truth of the Lord is your Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Seated in the house. Jesus, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His merciful kindness is great towards us and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise him. Praise him. Praise he the Lord. Amen. Amen. Truly, he's worthy to be praised. We acknowledge our apostle, Dr. G.W. Johnson, Pastor Gloria Joyce Johnson. Just good to seeing her in the house. It's just good seeing her in the house. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 The scripture is real, you know. He beautifies the meek with salvation. She's looking beautiful. Woo! Apostle, your wife is looking beautiful. Yeah. Are you looking handsome? You're handsome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to, to have them in the house. Uh, God has sustained them. Uh, you know, there were many, there are many days that we, we think uh, because of pain and age that it would be otherwise today. But God has kept them. Oh, glory be to God. You know, every time, every time I don't know about you, but every time I see them, I see miracle. Oh, you didn't hear me. Every time I see them, I see a miracle. Uh -huh. Just the other day, a young man was in a car accident and died. His father went to look at his body and collapsed and died. The father health look, looked healthy, but immediately had an heart attack and died. And uh, we heard of mere various sicknesses on Mommy Joyce, an apostle over the past year. God kept them through many dangers, toils and sneers. Look at them in the house today. Look at them in the house. God kept them. Mm. Yes, he kept them. I wish I could sing. Mm. He kept them. So they wouldn't let go. So they are here today. So they're here today. Because, because God kept me. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We have got to move along. Hallelujah. So I wouldn't let go. God's mercy gets me. Shanda. Just touch yourself where you are. Just touch yourself. God's mercy. Me, me. So I'm here today. So I'm here today. So I'm here today. Do I have a 
a testimony in the house. God kept me. Anybody want to testify? He kept me. Where are the testimonies? God kept me. Yeah, 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 my, my, my. He kept me. He kept me. God kept me. the rejoicing people let's clap your hands and sit down clap your hands and sit down acknowledging also Bishop Rankin F. Clark and I in, in acknowledging Bishop Clark I must acknowledge his wife missionary Norma Clark just stand where you are praise the Lord good to have you good to praise the Lord now, acknowledging also Bishop Ogarth McCoy, the president of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica, and also the pastor of the United Bethel United Pentecostal Church in Ocho Rios. Good to have you, sir. And I'm sure your wife and, and others are there. Do you have other persons here? Okay, we have other persons from Ocho Rios. Just stand where you are. All the person from Ocherius, good to have you, good to have you. Thank you for traveling with, with Bishop. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have our pastors from the various churches. Pastor Beverly O. Black, Madras, and the saints, Elder Paul Walker from Madras. Good to have you, good to have you, good to have you. We have Pastor Barbara E. Miles from the Napdale Assembly and the brethren from Napdale just stand praise the Lord we have what we have well, yes we got to praise the Lord praise the Lord we've got Pastor Doreen Dixon and uh, there are some brethren from Belair she's alone just stand where you are and just praise the Lord we have missionary E. Williams Yvette Williams from Middle Buxton and the brethren with him, with her. We got brethren from Claremont, yes, sorry about that. We were acknowledging Apostle Bishop Clark. Uh, stand the brethren from Claremont, I'm seeing. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He made sure he tell me that I need to acknowledge you, so I must acknowledge you. Uh, we have Pastor Monica Wright from the Lilyfield Assembly. And the brethren with her. Praise the Lord. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, yours truly, Elder Elroy Williams and the group from Retreat. Uh, three persons. Evangelist Barrett. And uh, just happy that we're here. We also have uh, someone you're going to be seeing here. Uh, Bishop Linden and um, she has been here on the stand for a while um, but she's from St. Elizabeth Junction and um, her I understand her pastor told her uh, she's now working in the area she's what, what has been happening is that for schools that do not have guidance counselors there's a cluster one guidance counselor to take on several schools in the in the region and she was recently employed as a guidance counselor based in Sturgetown, in Sturgetown. And so we have with us Sister Sinclair from Junction St. Elizabeth. And I understand her, the United Pentecostal Church, her pastor, recommend that since she is going to be working here, she needs to come to the Apostolic Ark. And we just acknowledge you. And we're happy that you're with us. We're happy that you're with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, there any other visitors I'm missing 
don't want to miss anyone. But where you're from, I'm seeing two young ladies at the back, besides Sister Kervin. So just, just, not just stand and just acknowledge you, yes. And the other person be sat behind you, yes. Good to have you, good to have you, good to have you. I just heard something. Missionary Dorothy Lawrence from Florida, she's here. It's Auntie Dar. Where's she there? Oh, you're there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to have you, good to have you. Ah, uh, yes. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's good to have you in the house. So on behalf of Apostle Dr. G.W. Johnson and the ministers here at headquarters, uh, Bishop Lyndon Johnson and the team here, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to headquarters. And a special day it is, a special day it is uh, in acknowledging Apostle and Pastor Johnson's pastoral journey. Pastoral journey, 56 years of ministry and so many accomplishments. Anybody in here is part of the accomplishment? You, you got saved because of his ministry. Just stand and praise the Lord. Then clap, now clap your hands, clap your hands. I, I, I'm, I'm happy at this time. Elder, Elder McDonald is telling me something. That the first convert under Apostles Ministry is still here. Will that person rise and praise the Lord? Is Sister Christina? Sister Christine. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, Sister Christine. Still here, still a, still a testimony of the ministry of this man. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And there are so many of us that can testify. Uh, but we're going to be having the praise team at this time. And then you'll hear from a noted justice of the peace, who is also a member of this church and also the principal of the Monique College Elder Howard Isaacs you'll be hearing from him and he'll take you through praise the Lord so there's praise team at this time
into the house of God the most important thing for me is to feel the presence of God everything else becomes secondary everything else is of no merit but when I come into the house and when the words of God and when the songs of Zion are going forth and even though Bishop McCoy I try sometimes to hold myself I can't hold myself because I feel the presence of God in the house. Oh God, I feel like worshiping. I feel like worshiping. I feel like worshiping. Come on, I feel like worshiping. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, I greet everyone in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ. 
I greet our apostle, Apostle G. W. Johnson, and also Pastor Johnson, and the other ministers who are here this morning into afternoon as we celebrate with us the 56th anniversary of the pastoral work of our pastor, Apostle G. W. Johnson. Could you put your hands together? Praise him, praise him, praise him. I am pleased to be here. I had another function that I was at. I had to speak at a function earlier today. But then I decided, I told them that I am here, I have to be here for more reasons than one. I have to be here because the apostle uh, is my father. Um, and Sister J is my mother. And they have schooled me well. And I'm here this day to just magnify God with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, I am also pleased to, first of all, uh, um, offer apologies for the custos of the parish, Honorable Norma Walters, who wanted to be here. But last evening, she made contact with me, and she asked me to be here to, first of all, publicly apologize to you, Apostle, for that she's not able to be here this morning. You would have known that in the past you would have made an effort to be here, but today she said she would not be able to be here, and she asked me also to offer her apologies, but more importantly, to read her message to you and Pastor Johnson as you celebrate 56 years of pastoral work right here in Brownstown. So in my other capacity now, as a Justice of the Peace of the Parish of St. Anne, in fact, the parish, the country of Jamaica, I read to you the message from the Custos of the Parish of St. Anne. This is Norma Walters. It reads, the St. Anne Custos message to the Apostolic Art, December 5th, 2021. It is my pleasure, on behalf of the citizens of St. Anne, to present these remarks to Apostle Dr. Jeffrey Johnson and his wife, Pastor G.J. Johnson, for 56 years of pastoral ministry at the Apostolic Ark Pentecostal Church of Jamaica International. It is with a deeply abiding spirit of respect that I join colleagues, family, and friends from all over the world to make this tribute to commend these Christian leaders and these leaders of Christians this outstanding son and daughter of this fine garden parish. I use this medium to extol the virtues of this proud family, citizens par excellence, arbiters of peace and justice, epitomizing lifelong selfless giving, altruism, a journey of unswerving partnership and commitment to serving fellow men. It was an unknown author who said, some people see void to be filled, a need to be met, a dream to be fulfilled, and an opportunity to be grasped. And without waiting to be recruited or validated, boldly and resolutely meet the challenges without hesitation." End of quote. Persons such as you, Apostle, are our everyday heroes. Apostle, without seeking any particular recognition, over these many years, you have met these standards and had quite correctly taken your place in the hallowed halls of excellence. So you had already been placed firmly on the platform of an unsung hero, being listed among a band of remarkable 21st century leaders. Your national award came eventually in August of this year. The impact of his work is well acknowledged and he uses his wide network as leader of the 40 churches here in Jamaica and also in the United States, Britain and Canada to change lives. For this follower of Christ, no one knows more than Apostle Johnson that one man can and certainly in Jesus' case did make an absolutely awesome and amazing difference. Under Apostle Johnson's skillful leadership, 
the church continues to provide spiritual guidance to thousands of Christians and invaluable education preparation for their children at the basic school. Hence, also, his fellow justices of the peace admire his graciousness, his generosity of spirit, his diplomacy, and yet his accessibility not only to his church members, but also to the local community. Apostle, Apostle, you and Pastor Johnson have been able to restore hope as together you have earned the trust and confidence of the people you serve. You and Pastor belong to a certain caliber, people with a capacity to do great deeds, the sense to do them wisely, and the strength of character to do them honestly and well. By working together with dedication and in many instances putting others' needs above your own, by your example for excellence and high standards, you have been able to build peace. As the virtuous wife, I hail you too, Pastor Johnson, as the ruby in your husband's crown. As a Christian woman, you are specially prepared to serve your Lord and Master all the days of your life. Hence, it is fitting that your children rise up and call you blessed. The challenges we face today are many, and in many ways new, but together you have been able to build your virtues. Your fellow compatriots have experienced your love of respect for people, and therefore, they have been diligent to study your selfish ways. So in identifying with your exceptional insight and your wise counsel, and indeed, your treatment of them all as children of God, you have inspired them and guaranteed their strivings for equal opportunities and successful achievements. With exceptional joy, we, the people of St. Anne, join hands and hearts to give thanks and to celebrate this significant milestone. Let us rejoice that we have found you both steadfast in his service and in good health. We pray for his continued grace and mercy. Be forever blessed. Sincerely, Norma L. Walters, Costas Rotolorium, St. Anne, the day of our Lord, December 5th, 2021. Could you put your hands together? I don't know if you recognize, but when the custos of the parish reached out to me, she WhatsApped me first and she said to me, make sure you are there to read this thing to the apostle. Apostle Johnson, on behalf of the Justice of the Peace of the parish and also your own brethren in this church, we celebrate you, sir. I don't know. Be patient with us. Be patient with us as we give acknowledgement to this man. This is one of the persons who, you see him stand here today. He's looking quite smart as he normally looks. Could you put your hands together for him? The, the other day, Bishop, when, I said it to you earlier, but the other day when you got your uh, national award, so many persons called me. When they looked at you on the television screen, they were saying that you're looking like you're about 50. You're looking young. And, and when I came in today and saw you looking as all you're looking at. Come on, church. Come on, the bishop is. Come on, this is your bishop. This is your bishop. I don't know if you love him like how I love him, but this is, this is our bishop. Our apostle. And also apostle's wife, Sister Gloria Jones. Put your hands together for them. God bless you, sir. God bless you. We're going to be going into the summary of the pastoral ministry. Our general secretary will be coming to us now, Elder Delroy Williams, also the pastor of the Retreat Church. And she'll be coming, you'll be coming now to do the summary of the pastor. And it's his first time, it's the first time he's coming to us in this capacity as general secretary.
It's good. Come on, welcome him, welcome him. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Let me acknowledge again Apostle Dr. G.W. Johnson, Pastor Gloria Johnson, Bishop Rankin Clark, our missions director, the the president of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica, <laughs> Bishop Ogarth McCoy, Bishop Lyndon Loy Johnson, and I should have acknowledged the or chairperson earlier, Elder Howard Isaacs, <laughs> JP. All our pastors who are here, we acknowledge them, as we've done earlier, all ministers, saints, musicians, the dynamic praise team. Praise the Lord. I, I really enjoyed the worship that we are in. Can we clap our hands in the house? It's difficult, it's difficult, it's very difficult to give a summary of the apostles' ministry. The scope of his ministry is wide and far-reaching. There are so many accomplishments in this short 56 years. I say short 56 years because in the short time, he has done a lot, not only for church development, but for nation development and spanning internationally to various areas. But let me try to be as short as possible. And I, if you have not got the 100th anniversary magazine, you need it. Because every time I read it, something new pops out at me. And uh, we, we have some here. And um, I'm going to ask you to try to get one. If you even get one already, you put it up. It's a dusty. You don't know where it is. Get another one. <laughs> you get another one, please. It was in 1957 that God touched the heart of young Jeffrey Wellington Johnson of Chester, Lawl, and St. Anne. His conviction and salvation transformed him with a passion for souls. Amen. Amen. The church visits from Chester, visited from Chester to Brownstone. Sorry, the church visits from Chester to Brownstone, and from Brownstone to Chester, helped to cement in his soul the desire for evangelism. Yeah. Under the guidance of his leaders, Elder Eno Simmons and his wife, Mother Mahalia Simmons, and the pioneer, Bishop Adrian A. Lee, young Johnson grew gradually in courage, grace, and faith. It was his earnest prayer that God would anoint him with a ministry like that of Apostle Paul. And he just echoed, he did it. There were times when he would go down with his face to the ground as he cried out to God for his divine will upon his life. 
like other examples in Bible, Brother Johnson had a season of growing, learning, waiting, and working from the back bush of Chester. God was leading, glory be to God, guiding and preparing him. He was not immune to hardships, temptations and trials. Like Elisha and David of old, he followed his leaders faithfully. Gradually, the talents for ministry endowed to him by God manifesting, manifested themselves. He was permitted to travel with Mother Melvina Needham White and his brother Evangelist Clifton Johnson as a singing bird. Praise the Lord. Playing on his guitar. And we remember the stories of him playing on one string guitars. He play until all the string bursts and one is left and he's still playing. Right after his marriage to Sister Gloria Joyce Seawright, he migrated to Brownstown. This decision afforded him the opportunity to work closer in assisting Bishop Lee, who was aging and sometimes hailing. The great migration of the young and promising brethren from the church to England left an effect, but God has a plan. I could tell you of the fact that he also tried to leave the island for better living, for a better life, and God said no. God told him at the time, through the man of God, that you will travel, but not now. And he didn't get upset. He didn't stop coming to church. He continued to serve faithfully beside the man of God. We could speak of various other accolades. But at Bishop Lee's departure, Brother Johnson was already prepared for the task ahead. At the eve of his death, Bishop Adrian A. Lee prophesied to young evangelist Johnson as he blessed him. Putting Bishop Lee to rest, evangelist G.W. Johnson immediately started to labor since then he has been working in the vineyard with a vision and a mission evangelizing and establishing churches inland and overseas. And if you look on the motto, worldwide evangelism, prayer, fasting, seeking for the lost. He is fully committed to kingdom building full of zeal, passion, and of great faith. He relies heavily on the written word on which he is a lover and a doer. He depends on the promises, he depends on the promises and the leading of God, acknowledging that only by God's help he can be successful. Who is our man of faith? By faith, in 1965, he accepted the mantle from Bishop Henry A. Lee, who went home on November 12, 1995. 65, sorry. In January 1966, he launched very successful revival services in Brownstone and Spicer Grove. And we acknowledge at least one person who is still here. It's more than one. No, we acknowledge at least one earlier on. So if you, there are more than one, I did ask, just stand up for me. If there are more than one, we just, just stand up for me. If you, you, yes, you're part of the ministry, then good. So we're seeing persons. 
So we acknowledge them. In 1967, he installed a steel roof and reopened the refurbished old sanctuary. In 1968, the new floor building was erected. The two floors, sorry. This extended the sanctuary and created room to conduct evening classes. In 1969, he honored two patriarchs of 50 years of service in the ministry. Mother Emmy White was one of the recipients. By faith, in 1970, a school was founded, the Jamaica School Certificate, JSC, and Jamal classes were held. By faith, in 1971, open air services were held at Knapdale District. In 1972, Cornerstone Lane was held at Knapdale, and a balcony was erected at the headquarters church. In 1973, a negotiation for the land space near the main church was held. In 1974, the new church at Knapdale was dedicated and the land was acquired to extend the headquarters church. In 1975, the church work at retreat was established. In 1976, he visited Jerusalem and also started the tract ministry. In 1977, he was ordained as a bishop dedicated and opened the extension at headquarters and began preaching on Radio Jamaica and acquired land space for the church at Middle Buxton. In 1978, held the first ministerial conference of the Apostolic Ark Pentecostal Church of Jamaica Incorporated. He led a team of ministers and brethren to the convention in Toronto, Canada. Started negotiation to for land to build the orphanage. In 1979, and you hear me in the background, still a kick. In 1979, launched island-wide crusades at places like Runway Bay, Salem, Hopewell, Hanover, Mount Pelion, and Lucy in Hanover. Ordained 61 ministers and received the charter for the Apostolic Ark Pentecostal Church Ministry. Let's ride over to the 80s. In 1980, he entered Cane River in St. Andrew to strengthen and supervise the church, call the nation together for 15 days of fasting and prayer. In 1981, he entered Claremont in St. Anne with evangelistic services, visited Jamaica House with 17 ministers. December 10, 1981, preached crusade in Mandeville. In 1982, Showers of Pentecost was the number one radio ministry on RGR. He launched island-wide tag drive to assist in erecting the old folks' home. In 1983, he piloted the Apostolic Art Ministry, sorry, ministers, to the Berkeley Beach Hotel in Runway Bay for a ministerial meeting. In 1984, faithful ministers of the Apostolic Pentecost of Faith and outstanding citizens were honored. In 1985, he re-established the educational institution of the main church, led team of ministers to the Caribbean Village Hotel in Rene Bay for a ministerial conference, and entered Madras to launch evangelism there. In 1986, had groundbreaking at Belair. In 1987, established churches in Toronto, Winnipeg, Calgary, Canada. Preached at island wide revival services in Santa Cruz, Linstead, Faith Temple. He ordained in 1987 72 ministers of varying categories from the island, inland and overseas. In 1988, preached Holy Ghost revival all over and preached to the Red Indians in Canada. And it was in one of these services that he preached and spoke in tongues. And they asked him, How you say you don't speak our language? He was speaking in their language. The Lord led him to speak in the language of the Red Indians that he could understand and people got the Holy Ghost and were baptized. In 1989, he entered England for the ministry, for ministry, received documents for the land at Belair, and entered the parish of St. Thomas for ministry. So in essence, by then he would have circled all 14 parishes 
for ministry. And that's just not in the 80s. In the 90s, the completion and opening of the first phase of the Home for the Aged at Belair in Runaway Bay. In 1991, he continued steadfastly with the work at Belair, worked on church buildings at Lilyfield, Middle Buxton, Cane River, and Claremont. Since then, our pastor, Apostle Dr. Gina B. Johnson, has continued to work assiduously in ministry inland and overseas. We are witnesses of the continuation and development of this great ministry of saving souls for the kingdom. God has blessed and promoted this humble man of faith from level to level. As an ordained elder, he was blessed to visit the Holy Land, as we were told here earlier on. In Elder Johnson was ordained a bishop as he earnestly conducted his ministerial duties internationally in 1977. Apostle, on the first Sunday of December 2006, a great company of ministers, brethren, and friends from inland and overseas gathered right here at 2700 Lee Avenue, Brownstown, to participate in the sacred event of him becoming a, an apostle, Apostle G.W. Johnson. And this was done by Dr. Ivan Evans of the Waterloo, the late Dr. Ivan Evans from the Waterloo Apostolic Pentecostal Church in Santa Cruz, and Dr. Zedekiah, the late Dr. Zedekiah Mitchell of the United Pentecostal Church in Highgate, St. Mary, with a company of ministers anointed him and his wife, Pastor Gloria Joyce Johnson. I'm wrapping up now. And there are so many more, I'm just running. On the evening of March 29, 2019, the Parkinsburg Bible College, International University of Bible Studies, Jamaican chapter under the leadership of Dr. Joe L. Nelson, President United State in, uh, of the IUBS in the United States of America, and Dr. Glenton John Dennis, President of the Jamaican chapter, conducted the conferral of the honorary doctor, doctoral degree on our presiding bishop, Apostle Jeffrey W. Johnson. August 2021, the government of Jamaica conferred on him the badge of honor for meritorial service to religion. Can we just stand? Can we just give him a rousing round of applause? And he will tell you that he's still kicking. He has not stopped. Even though there are so <laughs> He just said a while ago, no me a kick. <laughs> and it's so true. So true, really, really really honoring you sir uh, really honoring you and so we put our hands together again for all apostle apostle jeffrey johnson i tried to summarize but there are so many other things i could say about this great man of god and this great woman of god may god bless you may god bless you mighty long way lord mighty long way Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Oh, look where you brought me from. Mighty long way. Mighty long. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty 
Come on, praise God. Come on, let me hear you magnify the name of Jesus. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Some man say, look where you brought me from. Mighty long way. Praise the Lord. We're continuing the worship experience. Our general secretary shared with us about a snippet, a small portion of the work of this man of God. I noted something a while ago. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. They were singing the song, Mighty Long Way, Lord, Mighty Long Way. The apostle got up, felt the need. You don't know what came over him. It's not something that he, it's not, it's not a new thing. He does it from time to time. But there was something in the song, apostle, that motivated you to get up, ask your son to assist you, and you walked down and you hugged your wife. To me, that made me recognize how important she is to you. And we give God thanks for that. The apostle, I heard the general secretary reading, and he spoke about the campaign, the journey from churches to churches. And when the apostle would be on a campaign, Bishop McCoy, and you'll be going, for example, to St. Elizabeth. You'll start the Sunday. you start the, go the Monday. The Tuesday is still there. The Wednesday is there. And with him will be, at all times, his wife, Mother Johnson. It's a mighty long way. There's a story that when he gets inspired, he shares with us. About one night when they were coming back from the campaign, I call it a campaign for souls. And while they were traveling, that sister sitting there beside Mother Johnson said she saw an angel over the bus. And the, the son, Elder Johnson, the biggest one, was driving the vehicle and they drove hard because they were preparing to go back the next night. For those of us who have been with the apostle, when he finished preaching and the altar call is done, he doesn't steer around. He moves. And they were cutting the road. And she said she saw an angel over the bus. And they cut on the same way. The next morning, Bishop McCoy, when they got up and looked, that bus, the axle or the wheel, the bus was on its side. The thing cut off and the bus was on its side. Mighty long way! So when you see us come here, those of you are online and those of you are sitting in the church and you hear us making a big thing about this thing, there are many stories to tell. There are many stories to tell. I won't go into it now. But I'm going to ask you to stand now as I bring to you our Bishop, Bishop Lyndon Johnson, who is going to come on now to bring his greetings on behalf of the church, the Apostolic Art Church. Could you put your hands together for him, please? God shall wipe away all tears from my eyes. I shall wipe away all tears from her eyes. When he comes again, no weeping will be there. God shall wipe away all tears. God shall wipe away all tears from her eyes. Shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. When he comes again, no weeping will be there. God shall wipe away. 
Hallelujah, God bless you. God bless you. Can somebody open your mouth and praise God? Can somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Can somebody glorify God in the house? Hallelujah. Very quickly, I'd like to greet Apostle and Presiding Bishop, Dr. G.W. Johnson, Pastor G.W. Johnson, General Secretary Bishop, Ranking Clark, Special greetings to Bishop Ogarth McCoy, the presiding bishop and the president of the United Pentecostal Churches of Jamaica. We are indeed happy, sir, that you took the time out of your awesomely busy schedules to share with us this morning. We really do appreciate it on behalf of Apostle and all the brethren of this organization we love you and we really respect the time you take to be here with us today god bless you i won't i will not be, sh be much longer but what i'm saying today let the elders that rule well the operative word rule well rule well hallelujah can i get a witness in the house the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. A year that have passed, I greet all the other ministers, our incoming ministers, our moderator. I think it's the first over a year and a half we have gathered like this, having all our immediate local churches sharing in the headquarters since COVID. We're very happy to have you with us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We, we hope very, very shortly that we'll be having this church packed again to capacity. I looked even yesterday on a Chelsea match. That's Premier League. And I looked at some of the Spanish leagues. And the audience, the, the, the auditorium is a ram. We are looking forward to the day when we get back into this house. Packed to capacity. Glorifying God. But until then, we will continue to do what we have to do. We know we're a little bit over today, but we just had to accommodate the many brethren who are desirous of being in the house of God. We know that we're in some challenges, but we do give God thanks. We are honoring the life and the ministry of a man that deserves, hallelujah, to be honored today. And we are looking the audience, have seen many faces of persons who have gone through some struggles some hard times some trials we at this church we have lost so many of our brethren over the past year up to Thursday gone we we buried we put away one of our well faithful very faithful deacon and we have lost so many people are here today that are still grieving but until then my heart will go on singing until then with joy we carry on until the day my eyes behold the city 
until the day God calls me home. On behalf of the entire organization, Apostle and Presiding Bishop, my dad and my main mentor, we give God thanks for 56 years of ministry. And on behalf of also all your children, speaking from Elder Jeffrey Johnson to the last one, Thalia, we congratulate you on this milestone. And it's a fact. We can call you blessed because you're a man of worth. And to our wonderful mom, I personally have walked some very dark road with them over the past two years. Into last year, as Elder Williams said, there are occasions, I cannot be honest with you, there are occasions I looked at them individually and wondered if they would have been here today because of how far they went. Apostle tells us many times that his grave was dark, but God molded it up. I was telling somebody even this morning that the last time I went to him to the hospital, his blood sugar was 30. And the doctors told us that his blood was almost like jello. But look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Excuse me for a minute. Look what the Lord has done. So many comorbidities. Blood pressure, diabetes, congestive heart failure, pulmonary embolism, and yet they got the COVID. And they're still here. Look what the Lord has done. God bless you. 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 I turn back to our moderator. God bless you. God bless you. friend but I'm seeing this for you daddy God says he will make the darkness light before me what is wrong Hallelujah. Hallelujah. he'll make it right shut up before thee hey. he said all oh, your battles he will fight for thee the high place I'll bring down mommy with an everlasting love God will love thee though trials deep and sore he'll prove thee but there is nothing that can hurt or move thee and the high place I'll bring down when the walk is by the way I'll lead me
church. Hallelujah. 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 The song man says, the song man says, I will make your darkness light before thee. <laughs> All your battles. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of the Lord in the house. I don't know about you, but I feel his presence. I feel his presence. Oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I beg that the people of God would just stand to their feet and magnify God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. Our general secretary, when he read, he shared with us some stories about the man of God, about the many things that he would have done for the community, the many things that he would have gone within himself, getting the ordination as a bishop, as an apostle, and also an honorary doctorate, and even a national award from the government of Jamaica. Time didn't allow him to share with you some of the stories about the people who, through his kerchief ministry, have been healed from sickness. Time would not allow you to hear about the many times when people were almost at death's door. Oh, my son. And the prayer, the fervent prayer of this man. Ha, 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 ha would have made a difference allow me to testify allow me to testify allow me to testify oh God. allow me to testify please allow me to testify in 2018 October my appendix burst inside of me and when it burst they rushed me to the hospital and they said instantaneously I had to do the operation because all my vitals was going haywire. They placed me on the bed, they cut me open. An operation that should have been two hours took four hours to do. Hallelujah. And people prayed and the man of God prayed and the church prayed. And we were of the view that the operation was successful. Five days after, still in hospital, on my way home, I started to vomit. Didn't stop. Please allow me to use the language. Didn't stop for a night, and they had to rush me back to the hospital. On my way to the hospital, I reached out to the young daughter that just spoke a while ago about the fact that Ask the Apostle, he was standing, sitting in his seat, I said, go to Apostle, tell him that I'm being rushed back to the hospital. We don't know what is happening. My doctor was right beside me. He couldn't explain it because nothing was, I was eating, but everything was coming up. And she came across and she told him, and immediately he asked the church to pray. And he came to this podium, Bishop McCoy, and he began to pray. And I heard because what she did Hallelujah. was that she allowed me to hear the prayer that the man of God was praying. While I was going back to the hospital, my wife held the, 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 the I, did, I didn't have enough strength. My wife held the phone to my ears. And he prayed a prayer and he said, God, turn back the obstruction. Thank you, Jesus. He, said. he said, God, turn back the obstruction. And there are witnesses here who heard that prayer. And I was placed in the hospital bed. And the nurses came. And when they placed the bag over my face to collect the fluids, they, they said in all their career, they have never seen somebody having so much fluid coming out of his body. 
But the prayer of the man of God said, God, turn back the obstruction. The morning in question, I went through the night by faith. And the morning in question, six or seven doctors came above me and they looked at me and they said, today there must be an opportunity to get a full scan of what is happening in my body. Because if that doesn't take place, I am going to die. That's what they said to me. Testifying. Because somebody needs to know it's not just when we talk about these things, we're not just talking fable. I can testify that this happened with me. And I was rushed to a place. It was Heroes Day. I'll never forget it. And no place was open, but one person was willing to open to facilitate me. One individual said they would have to pay more, but they would. They, I said, let us go. My wife and my brother-in-law and my friends came and rushed me in the, in the ambulance because I couldn't go in the regular vehicle. Every part of my body had the tubes coming from it. And I went there and they put me in the machine and pulled me out. And I saw a look on the doctor's face. My personal doctor was there looking too and they both had a look on their face. And they put me in and took me back out. And the doctor, the reporting doctor, looked at my, my, my doctor and said to, the, to him, Listen, there is an obstruction. There is an obstruction. But based on what we are seeing, something is happening with that obstruction. Something is happening with that obstruction. And the doctor, when he looked at it, he said that they don't have to go back in to cut it open again because something is happening with that obstruction. The day before, the day before, the man of God ministered from this podium and he said, God, turn back the obstruction. Songman say, I will make the darkness light before thee what is wrong I'll make it right before all thy battles I don't know about the church but I feel like and the walk is by the way I will lead thee on the fatness of the land my testimony is not only my testimony alone. There are people sitting right here before me this morning. Elder Williams, stand. See him there. He was also hospitalized and to die shortly after. Both of us were attacked in the same year. Both of us were attacked the same year. I came out, he went in. But the man of God, the man of God, God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Someone says somebody prayed for me. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. I'm getting carried away, but please bear with me. Please bear with me. Allah Masanda Yamasha. We should have had greetings from Bishop Swart, but because of the technology, we have not been able to have him in. But he would have been here. He's one of those ministers that would have been with the apostle wherever he went. He would have been with him in Canada, in Connecticut, wherever in the States, in England, wherever he would have been. But the technology is not working today, so we are not getting him in. But we want to continue to give God thanks for the man of God and for the work that he is doing. We're going to be inviting the ministers now that are here to bring their very, 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 very brief tribute. Very brief. Notice I've said very about six times. Multiply that by two. So that's how brief I want you to be. Very brief. You're going to be very brief. Just going to say hi and bye. <laughs> but we give God thanks for you. We're going to be start with Pastor Monica Wright from Lilyfield, a very strong woman of God, a faithful servant of God. And we're going to ask Sister Wright, Monica, um, Pastor Wright to come now to bring her tribute and to bring her greetings and she's going to be followed by Pastor Beverly Black B.O.B. teacher my, 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 my principal my first principal when I became a teacher 
And I used to comb her hair. She don't tell anybody that, but... <laughs> well, you see the length and the, how good her hair is, my hand, my hand had a, a part. Bishop, B Apostle, Apostle, I used to comb Pastor Black hair back in the days. And um, Elder, Elder Black gave me permission to do it, so I didn't have any problem. But her hair looks lovely, and it's because I... I did it. So Pastor Wright is going to bring us greetings now. On my time, you know. You have to take some of my time. And I, I need that. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God, everybody in the house. Praise the Lord. I am excited to be here today. Almost two years we haven't gathered like this. And I'm so excited just being here today. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I want to greet everyone today in the house, all the ministers and friends, well wishers, and especially our chief guest today. Um, the Apostle Johnson and his dear wife, Pastor Gloria Johnson. You are the reason why we are here today. We are able to get to here. Um, we wrestle with Bishop Johnson, young Bishop Johnson, to have two persons accompany the minister. It is a wrestling day evening, you know, we have the first meeting, and I stood up and I said that we have to have two come with the bit pastor. Because um, the other brother here have the, have the apostle all the time, and we, uh, he's head of all of us, and we should be here too. So today I am glad to be here. I am sorry that I have to be so short, for there's so much to say. But the apostle Johnson, you know I love him from my heart. And the brethren from Lilyfield, we all love you, we adore you. We are happy for you. And my prayers, personal prayers for you, is that God favor you and give you a long life. I, but you know, when I heard the other ministers dying, I said, Master God, may I beg you for keep the apostle. Sustain him, Lord, and keep him. I am not selfish, but I want him to live as long as God would have him to live. I'm Apostle Johnson, we appreciate you for all that you have done for us and all that you are doing for us. I want to say something. The little wisdom that I have to go on with the church in Littlefield is because of you. I adopted so many things from you. And today, I am glad that I, I am in your hands. And as long as I live, I shall be staying in your hands. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. There's a change in the arrangement. We're going to be asking Bishop Rankin Clark to come now. And he is going to come. And right after, he's going to bring on Bishop McCoy. So Bishop Rankin Clark. And right after, he will bring on Bishop McCoy. Could you stand, please? for us to recognize Bishop McCoy, Bishop Clark, and then right after he will bring on, bring on Bishop McCoy. A wonderful savior is Jesus my Lord. How wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the depth where rivers of pleasure I see He Oh glory oh. In the depths Of the
That's why we can have a pastoral anniversary for Dr. Johnson, Pastor Johnson, 56 years. God has been doing it. Oh, praise the Lord. And he will continue to do it. Just let me greet everyone in Jesus' name. I am overwhelmed and happy to see Bishop McCoy here with us today. He just indicated to me that he was led to come. And apostle and brethren, I am led just to read what I was going to share and yield to Bishop McCoy. I believe God must give him something to help strengthen his servant. First Corinthians 9. And I'm reading. Yes, sir. Congregation, stand. I'm reading from verse 4. In a section of my Bible note, the apostolic right and privilege. That's one of the footnotes. And down below, Ministerial support. First Corinthians nine four. Have we not power to lead? Sorry, have we not power to eat and drink? Question. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Question. And I am serious about it. The apostolic must be clean. Apostles. Apostles. And I thank God we have some example right here. Praise the Lord. Or I only and Barnabas have not power to forbear working? Question. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Question. Who planted a vineyard and eateth not the fruit thereof? Question, are who feedeth a flock and eateth not the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or say it not the law, the same also. And all of these are questions. 
For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth not God take care for oxen? Question. Or save he it all together for our sake. For our sake, no doubt that it is written that he that ploweth should plow in hope. Bible. And he that treadeth in hope should be partaker of his hope. 56th anniversary. Bible. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. If others be partaker of this power over you, are not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest, 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 lost we should hinder the gospel of Christ. 13 and 14. Do we not know that they which minister about the holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partaker of the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Remain standing. It's a word of God. It's a word of God. Apostolic ark, brethren, the area from, that's a word of God. We have an obligation to our leader. We hear you from. And I'm so happy to have the president of the other organization, the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica, Bishop Garth McCoy. God bless you. and magnify the name of the Lord one more time. Father, we honor you. We thank you for your blood. We worship you because you are God. There is none like you in all the earth. The heavens declare your glory and the firmament show it your handiwork. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, your name is holy, your name is worthy. We bless your name, we bless your name. It is such a wonderful privilege. The Lord bless you. you. May be seated. It is such a wonderful privilege to be here. It's almost two months ago when I learned that there will be a special service. And just before I give you greetings, I will do this. I felt a strong pull to be here. So I spoke to one member of the family. And I said, only on one basis, I'll be at the Apostolic Ark on the 5th of December, two months from now. The only basis is that as much as I call Apostle my dad, and he's very, very dear to me, and of course I'll have to say something on that, but not even dad I don't want to know. And if you are going to tell dad I am not coming, so a promise was made, and I spoke to the Apostle up to yesterday, greet them, and I made mention of nothing, because a promise is a promise. <laughs> But I find myself caught, I mean, I ought to try, I try. I find myself caught in a thicket. But to him be all the glory, honor, and praise. I give honor to the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of my life. And I would like to greet my dad. Amen. You would not understand. Coming from far, you know, from 
far from over there, the church when I was in my teens, coming here on the junior choir with Bethel, and there many times the choir didn't get to sing because they didn't no preaching rather because once we start to worship and sing, you know what's up next. We used to have some wonderful times over the other side. Oh my God, I cherish those moments. Amen. So it's not just today. And so I greet the apostle. I greet Pastor, you know, Gloria Joyce Johnson. And let me just say something about mom because I remember about 18 years ago, and the Lord has blessed me with memory. I called to speak to dad about something urgent, and she told me he was sleeping. So I said, sleeping. And somehow she discerned my concern and she said, you young ministers, she wouldn't even remember. She said, you young ministers need to take a page out of his book because you're behaving as if you are engines and you need to take some time and rest. So you stay to talk about sleeping. And that, to me, that was a gentle rebuke. So I said, all right, mom, I'm gonna try my best to ensure I get some rest. And she said, no, because you're young, you know how to feel vibrant. You see how him stay? That's what she said, you know. There's a reason why he's like that, you know. And she gave me some other tips. And I never forget it. Mom, I'm still working on it. Still working on it, all right? Still working on it. So I greet Bishop Rankin Clark and all the other part, of course, Bishop Lyndon Johnson. Amen, amen. God bless you and congratulations. God bless you. We've been praying for you. And of course, to all of the bishops and pastors and elders and ministers and saints and workers of the kingdom. Amen. I greet you in the precious name of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. My wife would have been here, amen, but um, she wasn't feeling well this morning. There's a song that is on my heart. I'll do it just once and then we will just look in the word as we continue. Amen. We're pilgrims on the journey of the narrow road and those who've gone before us lines the way cheering on the faithful encouraging the weary their lives a living testament to God's sustaining grace Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses Let us run the race not only for the prize But as those who've gone before us Let us leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly lives. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the power of our devotions lines their way. May the foot The lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Lift your hands and magnify the Lord. Lift your hands and magnify the Lord. And when I think of the servant of the Lord, the angel of this house, there's one word that comes to my mind faithful amidst all the challenges amidst all the challenges again I say faithful faithful remember last year when I shared with your 101st anniversary the Lord gave me the word give me this mountain and it's over one year and I'm still feeling that charge in my spirit to say to the apostolic art Give me this mountain. Just for a few minutes. Amen. <laughs> Just a few minutes. One of the reasons why Apostle Johnson has been like a dad to me, and as much as we're so far apart, in fact, yesterday he reminded me of some things, amen, while we spoke. 
But he reminded me so much of Bishop Hoslin, my mentor, because I remember I came here to a funeral, Sister Isaacs is here and does her niece's funeral service. And while I was there worshiping the Lord and believe everything was all right, I got us up on my foot. And the next thing I know, I found myself here. And for 10 minutes, so I'll try and do it again in 10 minutes by the help of the Lord. Worship the Lord, Lord. hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I wrote this down. The Bishop, Dr. Apostle G.W. Johnson, all of them. Pastor Gloria Joyce Johnson and family. Bishop Lyndon Johnson, Bishop Rankin Clark, the entire leadership structure of the Apostolic Art International and members of the community of Brownstone. Greetings in the precious name of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Heartiest congratulations to you on this 56th pastoral anniversary celebration. Amen. And this indeed is a milestone. Amen. And as was expressed before, we know without a doubt that the hand of the Lord is on his servant. Yes, Praise the name of the Lord. And I'll just extend to you these heartiest congratulatory expressions on behalf of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica as well. I'd like to say to you that we are very proud of you. Your life, your legacy that the Lord has allowed you to preserve until this moment. When I saw him touch me and he was dancing, you know, I, I said, my God, God is truly amazing. 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 All right. So my 10 minutes starts. Now let's stand together. I'm going to be connecting what was read by Bishop Rankin Clark with what I feel very, very strong in my spirit. Because we're living in a time where there's so many skeptics and there's so many critics and, you know, just about everything. And many times you look at someone where they are, but you don't recognize the path they have taken and the sacrifices that they have made. And I told the brethren at Bethel all the while, I don't believe in REITs. For the past 25 years, I've not spent one cent in buying a wreath. That's just my conviction. Right? And because of that, I try to express myself to people while they're alive and can hear and can respond and appreciate. Yes, Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. And Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, he shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby he shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Gergeshites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. We worship and we adore you. God bless you. you may be seated. Follow the ark. That's the, what the Lord placed in my spirit when I sat in that chair. Follow the ark, mighty God of Daniel. And so Moses was a great leader, mighty God. Moses had 
the Red Sea. And when the children of Israel were journeying from Egyptian bondage and they reached the Red Sea, the mountains on the either side, Pharaoh and his army be, were behind them and they were coming and they were looking very fierce. And the people cried unto Moses. And Moses said, why are you crying to me? In fact, the Lord said when Moses cried to him, why are you crying to me? So the people are crying to Moses. And Moses didn't have anybody else to cry to. And he cried to the Lord. But the Lord said, why are you crying to me? I want you to stand still, God Almighty. How do you stand still when you're in full flight? How do you stand still when the enemy is advancing against you? You see, our God is a moving God. And you cannot experience this movement until you are standing still. And it was not until Moses stood still. He heard the voice of the Lord again. What is in your hand? A rod. What does one dry piece of stick has to do with about two million plus people trying to cross the Red Sea? Our God is a miracle working God. Our God is a awesome God. Hallelujah. And so when Moses, the Lord said, stretch for the rod. And when Moses did that, then the miraculous happened. Many times you want God to move, but he wants us to obey him. Sometimes it looks foolish. Sometimes it appears foolish. But what can we do but to trust and obey? But that was Moses. But Moses was now off the scene. Here came Joshua. And in Joshua 1, the Lord told him, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was in Moses, so I'm going to be with thee, Joshua. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. But there's one thing you must do. Be strong. Hallelujah. And have a good courage. Woo. I'm giving you all the backup. I'm giving you all the support. But you must do one thing. Just be strong. And, and very courageous because I'm gonna give to you uh, the command to lead these people into the promised land. And so the time was come, and Moses had bestowed his anointed on Joshua. But now was Joshua's time, and the Lord said, Joshua, today I'm gonna magnify you before the people. I want them to know that I am real. And though Moses is not here, I am here. of this very special furniture to Israel. Overlaid with gold, with two cherubims, almost touching each other. Between them was the Shekinah. There was a light that came from the presence of Almighty God Himself. Above that was the cloud, the glory cloud. That whenever the cloud moves, it means that Israel should move. Whenever the cloud stops, it means Israel should stop. Our God is an orderly God. When you speak me with my whole heart I agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes and at night the glory cloud becomes a pillar of fire our God is an all encompassing God he just know how to minister he just know what to do when to do what to do where to do glory be to God all we need to do is trust him and so it was this ark look into the ark now there are three things in the ark surplus was on a Friday because they're not supposed to go out on a Sabbath day to gather manna. But guess what? If one man did it and it was spoiled by the next day, but yet for years, for thousands of years, the manna was in the ark and it was preserved. If you stay with Jesus, I don't care. It could be hell or high water. He's going to preserve you. 
Stand with me, please. It's one of the things I wanted to do. Ask them to get 12 stones from the 
So we are putting it on record, sir, that that word is not finished. Because there's much more to talk about the manna. I don't want to go back there. There's so much more about that word as I listen to you, but because of the time constraint that you're under. But I know, I feel it in my spirit, that you want to go back there and tell us more about following the Come on, put your hands together for Bishop McCoy. Praise God. One of the things about him as a young man, as I've noted, is that he keeps connection with Bishop Apostle G.W. Johnson. And that's good about you, sir. We applaud you for coming. This is this gentleman that you see sitting here yes, is the president of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica. In fact, he sits on the United Pentecostal Church International Board. So he's not a little pian pian preacher. He's an established preacher. But he comes to us and he sees the needs to connect with the apostle. And he shares with us about following the ark. Come on, come on church. We give God thanks for men like these. And he came here. I didn't know this. I knew him in my early days. But he spoke about Bishop Hosley. There's a relationship with Bishop Hoslin and Apostle Johnson. There's also a relationship with Bishop Gallimore and Apostle Johnson. I stood in church in, in uh, St. Anne's Bay. Quickly, tell about this man minister. And he was preaching the word and he came, a word came to him and he asked somebody to get up to read it. The person at first, a member of the church was going to read it. And then the bishop said, no, give it to an unsaved. And they gave the Bible to the unsaved and the unsaved began to read the word. And as she read the word, little after that, Adama Sandayama. Oh God. Without a dogs and sorcerers. And as she read the word, the power of God came in the church and immediately, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. I saw that happen under this man's ministry. Oh God, oh God. We're worshiping God today. We thank God for Bishop McCoy. We're going to be moving on quickly. Time is against us. And we have so many other things that we need to do. We're going to ask Bishop Pastor Black to come. If she's not yet ready, we're going to be asking Sister. We're going to ask Pastor Dixon to come now to bring her tribute on to make her quick comments as we celebrate Apostles' ministry. Lead you to know that Bishop McCoy is going to be leaving us. We give God thanks for you for coming, sir. Words are not sufficient to acknowledge you. And there's somebody that I know very well, too, who is a good friend of mine. Good to have you here, Bishop. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Praise the Lord, everyone. I feel excited to be here today. And after all that we've been through, and we have got the word of God, I feel blessed. Praise the Lord God Almighty. It's just good to see everybody. I just endorse what the others have said. Because if I should take up the time to greet our beloved apostle and his wife and the ministers and everyone else, it would really take a long time. But I heard one writer said, if I had to tell it, 
I just couldn't tell it all. He picks me up every time I fall. That's why I know he hears me when I call. There are so many things, wonderful things about Bishop. know that I know some things because I've been here from 1966 and isn't he wonderful and everything that has been stated in the the history I can say amen to it I can also add to it that thank God 10 years ago hallelujah when the apostle said we would be going to Bel Air for youth week just two weeks before youth week Everybody thought his head had gone again because we know how many times before his head went. Because when he said we were going to build a church down here, at that time he mad. But when he said we were going to Bel Air, Lord, we said no in God completely. But thank God we went to Bel Air and the crusade went. And thank God out of that we have a church called the Apostolic Ark Worship Center in Bel Air, Runaway Bay. And I add that to the history of which our pastor is not here today, but I'm a part of that. God bless you. God bless you. I love you, Bishop. And then if I have to tell you about Pastor Johnson, you might say she, she's not hearing us clearly now, but she remembers everything. There is nothing that has happened since before her marriage and between her and Bishop that she does not remember. I can tell you something, if you come close to her, she can tell you the last conversation that she had with you and the apparel that you were in, as detailed as that. So we give God thanks for them. And we are here today because of this man and his wife and for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I remember Bishop Dr. Zedekiah Mitchell told us here that if United Pentecostal Church was going to break down, it's one of, it was going to break down on him. I can tell you that if the apostolic ark is going to break down, it's going to break down on me because I can't go anywhere. God bless you in Jesus' name. On behalf of the quartet, no, because we don't have Evangelist Campbell again of blessed memory. I could go into that. Our present, our gift, our token is here. And also on behalf of the Apostolic Ark Worship Center, Bel Air, Runaway Bay. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Dixon. God bless you. We'll be kindly asking all the other pastors that are here to give their contributions. If you could do that this afternoon on the Zoom platform. It's almost 3 o'clock and we would like to proceed. So we're asking you to come on the Zoom platform this afternoon to give your tributes. God bless you and all the other brethren that are here to give your uh, contribution in whatever form. We'll be asking you just to proceed momentarily and we'll be do it, doing it in a very uh, quick um, time. So please just see with us, time is far spent. So we'll be asking all the other pastors if they can come online to do that this evening. I'll hand back to the, mod I'll hand back to the moderator. And we'll be taking the tithes, the day's tithes and offering also in a little while. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. As you heard, we are working with a time constraint. And therefore, we're going to ask everybody that have their tokens just to come. And while you're coming also, right after Bishop Clark being the, has led us right there. And everything should be placed on that table. So while the praise team do a chorus, sing a song with us. We're going to be asking you to come quickly now and we are going to go with the tokens that are given and then we are going to go into closing the service. God bless you and we are asking you, brothers and sisters who have things to give, who do can you start the process and come up please and place them on the table where we shall plan this time, please. Praise the Lord, we need to do this very quickly. Could you let me know this life songs, please? Mm. Oh, as I look back over my life, just a minute, and I think, think, 
God bless you. The brethren that are, will be coming, could you just proceed? Um, if you could just, we'll just give it a chance to identify where you're from and what you, what department. Just that and put down your gift and go back, please. Could you just do that very quickly, please? All the departments, if you're individuals, could you do that very quickly, please? Oh, as I look back over my life And I think things over I can truly say Can you do that very quickly, please? All the departments, could you come very quickly, please? Sunday school classes. Are you coming? Are you coming, sis? Could you do that first, please? First of all, everybody, from Pastor Gallimore and Kate, and the brethren from Cain River. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm here to make a presentation to Apostle and Pastor Johnson. But I got a card that I really have to strike my heart, I really have to read this one. I thank you and a special prayer for an inspirational pastor, for giving so much of your time, for all the thoughtful things you have done. God bless you. For showing by your example how God lives in everyone, for all your kindness through the years, for helping in big and small ways. He will not suffer your feet to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber or sleep. I thank you and a special prayer that God will bless you always. May the joy which comes from knowing God bless your heart each and every day. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord from the Claremont Apostolic Ark Church family. I do present this to Apostle and wife. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bishop Lindell Johnson Sunday School class to Pastor Johnson and Apostle Johnson. God bless you both. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Do you have anybody else coming? Do we have anyone else coming? I'd like to make note very quickly that the march that we announce is for next week, not this, not this week, next week Sunday. The march that we announce, thousand dollars march. Please God bless you. Ushers. Anyone else coming? Could the ushers come forward, please? The priest team, could you go ahead, please? Could, can you proceed, please? Oh, walking with the angels, singing, singing hallelujah. 